Or the first ransomware program I remember was 1989, but it really got kind of kicked off in 2005 and 2007 when Bitcoin allowed them to get paid without getting caught. And everybody knows it as, hey, this it encrypts your data and your computers. You got to pay your money and get it back. But starting last year, about a year ago, about this month, uh, ransomware started to do some other things. They, they got tired of people having good backups and not paying them. So they actually started to, number one, uh, look around in companies for quite a while. The average ransomware program is in a big company for up to eight months before it goes off. Wow. Uh, but they look around, they find the data that's the crown jewels of a company, uh, customer files, employee files, their product files, you know, patents, that sort of stuff, emails, and they exfiltrate it out of the network. And then they say, if you don't pay us, we're going to post this data on the internet, or we're going to give it to hackers, or we're going to give it to your competitors. They're stealing more and more passwords than ever before. It used to be they would uh, steal passwords, but only so they could spread around the network. Then they started using TrickBot and some other uh, type of malware programs to collect passwords. And they actually collect passwords of employees and customers, and they go on to attack those people. And they tell them, hey, we, we are making your life kind of a living hell only because your employer did not pay us, you know, 2% of net revenues or something like that they're also going out of the way to embarrass the company they're also they've created pr uh, websites where they're like hey we broke into this person this is the data we have they're even auctioning the data off so uh, the combination of new things that they're doing i gotta tell you it's pre it's pretty amazing I, I hear a lot of people go, well we're not going to pay the ransom we're not going to pay the ransom i'm like I don't think you know until they have your data and what data they have and it's out and they're threatening to put it out there to the world do you really know whether or not you're going to pay that ransom? Because, you know, there's a lot of reputational harm. I don't think any of us want our private emails and top secrets in our company out there on the internet for everybody to see. Like, even in the best of companies, there are things that are said between employees and things that are said about maybe a customer's frustrating somebody. You don't want that out on the internet. So it can cause us long-term reputational harm. I have some friends that all they do is ransomware stuff. They do like a 1, 1,500 ransomware responses a year. Two of the guys I know said that they have not been involved in a ransomware incident where the, where the victim hasn't paid the ransom in the last year. Wow. So let's talk about doing better because obviously, you know, things need to be done. For CISOs who are working at hospitals in our country, in light of you know what we know, what should they be doing better today? Well, so risk-based analysis, not all risks are the same. Um, and figure out how things are breaking in, most likely to break in. Like if somebody's breaking into your house, you need to determine, are they coming through the door or the windows and then fix that problem? Well, a lot of people, uh, there's so many things, so many ways you can be broken into in the IT world that people get lost. They see threats as bubbles in a glass of champagne. And really there's two threats that for 33 years have been the same two largest threats and that's social engineering and unpacked software. Right now, social engineering is responsible for 70 to 90 percent of all malicious data breaches. Unpatched software is responsible for about 20 to 40 percent. And everything else added up together only accounts for 1 to 10 percent of the risk in most environments. I would say that sea levels need to focus on putting those threats down a little bit more. Right now, there's this huge misalignment and the average organization only spends about 5 percent of their budget trying to put down social engineering and unpatched software. And they're spending all this money on antivirus and intrusion detection and all these advanced things when the reality is if you spent more time better fighting social engineering through a combination of policies technical controls and education and you better patch your most critical the most critical most likely software to be compromised that's internet browsers the operating system things like that if if mo more organizations focused on just two of the threats they'd be far better protected than trying to do everything great at once. 